Great, so let's talk about the open mapping theorem. So a continuous function from R2 to R2, which, uh, well, you know, that, that uh, uh, set of complex numbers, uh, that's just R2. So if we take any, uh, any continuous function, um, well, it can do quite bad things to the topology. Um, at least uh, pushing forward, uh, you know, if, if we look at uh, what are the images of uh, the open sets which define the topology. Now, for example, this mapping uh, uh, that, that takes x, y to x, x times y, well, that takes all of R, uh, R2, I mean, uh, which is an open set, right? It's actually both open and closed. Uh, and it takes that into this uh, sort of not quite a uh, slit plane, but it, it's basically uh, uh, the entire uh, 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 the entire plane minus the 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 y axis, except except at the origin. Uh, that's where you have uh, uh, that is in the image. Well, that's neither an open nor a closed set. Um, this uh, the this function this 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 mapping is actually quite uh, quite famous. This is the this is the blow up uh, blow up map, and it's uh, that's uh, that's the way that uh, uh, we we desingularize um, objects. Uh, so this is important in algebraic uh, uh, geometry. Uh, this is, for example, what uh, what the Horonaka one. Uh, uh, the the fields metal for although uh, you know, well a bit more than just writing down this map but uh, it's uh, you know that's that's the, the the most basic version of it um, all right so uh, but even something this simple uh, you know it's, it does something very bad to the topology but it's not holomorphic holomorphic functions are always nice to the topology. Uh, so a continuous map, uh, it pulls back open sets to open sets, right? Whenever we have an open set in the uh, in the range, we pull it back, right? F inverse of uh, of that uh, set is open, right? That's really what that's that's the definition of a continuous map, really, in terms of topology. If we just have this, you know, topology, which meaning we know what open sets are, that's what open, uh, that's what uh, continuous function means. Now, for a holomorphic map, uh, what the open mapping term uh, will say is that whenever you have um, an open set V, then the image of that set. Uh, image of that open set is open unless f is constant I mean, a constant function still holomorphic but it uh, does not um, well, it's it, you know it maps everything to a single point right if it's constant so uh, so not for constant maps but for non-constant maps uh, the images of open sets are open so here's a uh, uh, more precise uh, version of this so suppose that we have uh, a domain and it's important that it's a domain that is connected uh, and suppose that we have uh, a non-constant holomorphic mapping f uh, then we have that the uh, image f of v is an open set whenever v is an open subset of u right and it's uh, it takes open sets to open sets. It's an open mapping. So to prove this, so suppose suppose uh, f is uh, not constant. As uh, u is connected, it's not constant near every point. Now what that means is that uh, uh, you know. It, at near every point, there is a neighborhood, and it's that is the restriction to the neighborhood is not constant. Because if it were constant on some neighborhood, it will be constant everywhere if u is a domain, right? So if it's non-constant, then it's non-constant near every point. 
Now, what does that mean? That means that if I take a look at this, uh, this expression over here, f of z minus f of p, uh, that that is zero uh, at p, right? So maybe I could start with given <laughs> given any point p in v, right? Uh, this expression f of z minus f of p will be zero at p, but that zero will be isolated. So therefore, there is a neighborhood, and um, we can pick a whole closed neighborhood um, inside v. Right? It's a whole closed disk, uh, closed R disk around P, uh, such that, uh, well, if it's, if it's an isolated uh, zero, right, then, then, then for some small enough disk, um, F of Z is never equal to F of P on the boundary of this disk. Uh, so it must uh, have some positive minimum. So therefore, there is some delta such that uh, uh, we get this estimate, f of z minus f of p in, in modulus is, is bigger than delta, which is a positive quantity, right? For all z in the boundary of this of this disk, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to basically, what we're going to do, we're going to find uh, a little disk uh, uh, in, in the image of v uh, around... Uh, uh, f of p, right? That's that's what we're gonna do. Now, this function f of z minus f of p has at least one zero in this disk, namely at p, right? Uh, I say at least one zero. Well, we can, you know, if you uh, uh, say, well, it's it's really just one zero, but it could be of higher multiplicity, right? So it could have a higher multiplicity zero at uh, at p, possibly. Uh, but at least one, right? There is at least one zero. Uh, that's, that's all we need. Now, let's suppose that we take a W uh, in, this, um, in this delta disk around F of P. And uh, uh, for any Z in the boundary of, uh, uh, of this R disk around P, uh, we start approximating. So basically, we, we, we take a look at these two functions, f of z minus w and f of z minus f of p. We take their difference and we take the modulus, right? Uh, well, that's, that's, just, um, that's just f of p minus w. Now, then we have this inequality, f of p minus w in modulus is less than delta. Well, that's exactly that. That's just what this means, right? That that W is in the delta disk around f of p, right? That's just a way of, of writing that uh, you know that thing. And then just above, uh, delta was picked so that it's always less than f of z minus f of p, right? Because z was in the boundary of this disk. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have uh, two functions. We have uh, f of z minus f of p right and we have f of z minus w right and we have something that looks exactly like what we'd use Rouchet's theorem for right and well that's 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 what we do we get uh, we use Rouchet and by Rouchet f of z minus w has the same number of zeros as f of z minus p and f of z minus p has at least one zero, so therefore f of z minus w has at least one zero. That means that there is a z in this disk, right, in the R disk around p, uh, such that f of z is equal to w, right? This was for any w in this delta disk around f of p. Now what does that mean? That means that the entire delta disk is inside, so the entire delta disk around f of p is inside the image of the, uh, the, the, the r disk around p. Well, that's clearly inside the image of uh, v, right? So therefore, we found uh, a disk uh, inside the image of v, and therefore the image of v is open, right? So we're done, um, uh, we're done with the proof. Now, the open mapping theorem is, uh, you can think of it as a sort of stronger version of the maximum principle. It says, uh, 
it says basically what the maximum principle, maximum modulus principle says, but it's it says something more. So the maximum modulus principle says that uh, the, the modulus can attain a maximum, uh, but here we say even even more. We say that 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 actually the image of uh, uh, of of any point is in the interior of uh, of uh, uh, the image of, of of a neighborhood of that point. Uh, that means that well, there is definitely some points that are you know if 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 p is some distance away from the origin, that's what the modulus is, right? Uh, so well, sorry, if f of p is in some uh, some distance away from uh, the origin, right? That's what the modulus is. Then uh, then there are points in the image, uh, image of a small neighborhood of of p that are even further because there's a whole neighborhood um, around. Uh, uh, f of p that's uh, 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 that's in the image, right? So f, uh, the modulus, cannot achieve a maximum at p, right, for a non-constant function, right? So uh, you can think of it as a sort of a, a stronger version of the maximum principle. Uh, now, the, the proof is actually, uh, you, you know, gives us something somewhat more explicit. It basically says if, if you find um, if you find uh, uh, that f of z is uh, at least delta away on a little circle, then the entire uh, delta neighborhood um, of, of f of p will be in the image, right? So it gives gives us an actual it gives us more than than the open mapping theorem, right? I mean, we can use the proof. Uh, to even get uh, you know uh, some sort of a bound on the size um, of this disk, right? So if, if we if we know something more about f, uh, we can actually uh, if, if we can get some bounds about f, we can actually uh, you know get a size estimate on this disk. All right. So that's the open uh, that's the open mapping theorem.